And here we go again. I'd like to introduce you to a, another program I found on the internet, but first I'd like to ask a question. How many times have you gone to your computer to find that you can't remember which document a certain letter or phrase or word is used in? Um, if you're a great letter writer or email writer or composer, then you'll know that uh, it's very infuriating and frustrating to find that the one time that you particularly want to find a word or phrase you can't remember exactly where it is. Well I found a little program which overcomes that situation and it's called DocFetcher um, and it's uh, quite um, useful. If I go to DocFetcher site which is uh, I'll give you the address at the end of this demonstration but it's totally free and always will be according to the script and the dialog boxes here. Um, it uses Java runtime environment so you'd need to download Java which uh, if you go into the website um, which is on sourceforge.net uh, it does give you all the links necessary to uh, download Java um, the latest version as well so uh, that would update on your computer if you already have JavaScript then no need to worry but we can download um, uh, the portable version if you wish uh, DocFetcher 1.1.14 which is a portable version. It works in Windows XP Vista 7, 8. It works on Linux. It works on Mac operating systems um, from 10.5 and newer, apparently. So we'll, we'll download that. It's uh, not the biggest file in the world. Um, with SourceForge, it gives you a chance to read some of the uh, comments on the download page. Uh, but keep your eye up in the corner here where it gives you the length of time it takes to download. It's um, it's not a small program. It took me on my computer just over 30 seconds to download. Um, but when we're finished with that we can go to the downloads folder where we'll find the uh, zip version of what we just uh, downloaded which is docfetcher 1.1.14 portable. Um, we can unzip that, uh, extract all, and it tells us where we can unzip it to, which will just go with defaults. It's uh, Again, because I've installed it before, it's having a few little, uh, little problems here, just uh, unzipping. But we can overcome that quite easy. And say it's for 50 megabytes in size, so it may take just a moment or two on your computer. Obviously, it depends on the speed of your computer, but uh, it's well worth it in the end. Doc, uh, Doc Fetcher is totally free. Um, it's developed by people who believe that the internet should be free, and all programs distributed on it should also be free. Programs like this, they are free, the developers work in their own time. But I would suggest if there is a donate button on any of the pages, um, that if you're going to use the program, um, then do donate to uh, their cause. So we'll have a look at uh, DocFetcher Portable. We've unzipped it. We've got um, several folders and files here th that come with the unzipped uh, version. We have a configuration. We have an app, DocFetcher app, so that'll be for the mobile phone uses, etc. Um, it'll be help with images, indexing, language, libraries, etc. Um, you'll see the uh, the face here on DocFetcher. Well, that's the one we want to run. So we give it permission to run on the computer. It takes but a moment. This page we can send it to full screen if we wish. Or we can just drag it out to the size that we want it to. And uh, as you can see, there are uh, several different different panels which we'll have a look at. Um, first one, the, you'll notice at the top here there's no file view uh, edit menu at the top here. Um, there is one or two changes you can make. There's a manual that comes along with it by pressing F1. There's also a configuration uh, preference button. Um, you can highlight colors, the type of script it uses. If you've got um, not so good eyesight you can increase the size of the fonts used in the various parts of the program um, and you also have a global hotkey of control F8 if you want to uh, 
have a look and change one or two settings. Um, there's some general program settings, tips and hints on how to do and what to do. Well worth a read on the advanced setting button here. If you make a mistake and you're not sure what it was originally, there is a restore default setting button. Very handy, especially if you make one or two changes and you don't like them all and you can't remember which one affects which part. Hit the reset button and go back and start again. Anyway, that's the setup I've done. I've just changed the size of the fronts I'll use. Now, underneath the, um, uh, the, the top bar there where it says Dock Fetcher, um, you'll see this minimum maximum file sizes. I haven't really done anything with that. If you want to, you can change the minimum size. If you've got a very small file that's only got a few letters in it, it may be just bytes big. It could be kilobytes big, or it could be megabytes big, or it could be a massive file gigabytes big. But, you know, change that to whatever you want. It doesn't appear to make a lot of difference to the progress of the files. In the panel, the document types panel underneath there, there is uh, a lot to choose from. We can have scalable vector graphics, SVGs, we can have rich text formats, the sort you get if you run uh, WordPad um, on the computer. There's lots of different ones. Abbey Word is catered for, EPUB is catered for, HTML documents are catered for, even JPEGs um, are catered for. So lots and lots. MS Word doc and all the variations of uh, Word 2007, Open Office and Office uh, document um, programs that will install. Even plain text there we've noticed. Um, However, how do we use it? Right, we'll have a look around the screen. Um, underneath the middle bar here, we have um, the dock fetcher. Um, basically, it, it's a help list. It's the manual for the uh, program. Well worth reading. It does link with the internet if you click on any of the blue link buttons. But for now, I'll just give you my impression of it and my view. Um, we have a search bar at the top there, but uh, if we try to put a word in, for example, I don't know what, should, what word should we use. Let's have a, a this simple word like Dale. Um, we can search and we get this noise saying there is nothing to search and no indexes have been created. Well, that's because we haven't set any up yet. Right, so we'll just move that bar back. The search scope, this is where we're going to set up the indexes. And to get this um, working, we need to right click on this box anywhere in the white space here and create index from, and it gives you a few choices. If you're looking for emails and you have an email list on your computer or uh, PST files in Outlook on your computer, then you can click on that and it will do uh, a search of your computer for the PST files. I'm going to just click on the folder at the top here and it's going to say select a folder. So I'm going to go to my computer. I have, I have lots of um, areas where I have lots of text. I do lots of writing. Um, and in that writing folder, I have books, book two, a Doctor Who book, I have Kevin and the Ghost, new ideas, new novelist scripts, the Captain, the Leslie, uh, Captain was a play, the Leslie's a book I'm working on, and there is plenty there to choose from. Now if I click OK at the bottom of the writing, when I've selected writing, this is going to give me um, the window here. You can detect executable ZIPs and 7Z archives, which slows it down a little bit, not a great extent. And store relatives paths, if possible, for portability. So if you're running this on your uh, laptop or uh, a tablet or whatever, then you might need to tick that button. I don't. I'll leave it as it is. This is running it exactly as it was in its original form. In fact, if you want to click the restore button, you can do that. Um, the next thing to do, once we've selected our folder which is named up the top here is writing. We click run and you'll see this start to uh, read out all the various uh, files that I have created on that drive. Now this can take uh, quite a, a while. Um, it does read about 200 files a minute so it's not going to be slow but it won't work until it's finished doing its indexing. Um, I can open up this, uh, this writing folder and have a look what's in it. Um, when I click search now, it comes across Doctor Who Christmas Story. Um, I can click on that and straight away all the words Dale are highlighted, the primary one in blue and the rest in yellow until I click off it. 
Dale is used quite a lot, in fact. It's used eight times in this document. So, um, there we go. That's just one view. Let's have a look at uh, something else. Um, we can have a look at a peculiar spelling of Danny, which is a, a name. We can search for Danny. And I can see here that it's uh, in a book 84 weeks. I can click on it and it's in the index to the book and it's also that is the first of 694 mentions of the name Dam Danny and I have a backup of the book obviously I have the books um, in one form and then I've got the backup when it's found both of those so let's have a look um, through that if I just uh, scroll very quickly through and um, we should be able to see the Danny's highlighted there we go there's a few there in the text. This is the way it's mentioned. Um, one or two other things, other ways I've used it is by clicking to, to find more source. If you if you shrink down the writing folder which I have there and right click and create another index folder um, we can actually go to say another file or another um, another part of my hard drive in actual fact. Let's close that up. I can go to music. I gather words from songs with chords because of my interest in music. Um, I can click on words and chords. Obviously, there's quite a few in there to go at. Again, leave the text exactly as it is and click Run. And this will go through 500, 600, 7, 8, 9, uh, 1,888 files It's uh, it's actually read. And that's taken 13 seconds according to that, which is a lot faster than uh, what it claims to do. So let's have a look at words and chords. Suppose I wanted a, a, the words Christmas. That's a good idea. And see how, there we go, there's quite a few uh, mentions of Christmas in some of these songs. Christmas cake is a, um, a recipe which seems to have got mixed up in there somehow. Don't know where that's come from. Um, Alfie and the Christmas tree. A little poem there, and I wish it could be Christmas every day, don't we all? And this is um, these are the words to songs which I've collected somewhere on my computer. To find an individual um, set of words that you've used somewhere, it takes a strain out of going. Can you imagine how long it's going to take to go through all these files and folders? Um, if in Kevin and the Ghost, for example. Um, click all these out. If I want to just search Kevin and the Ghost to find out um, one particular word uh, which I don't know what we can look at is uh, uh, we'll look at G-U-A-R-D oh, guard and see if it comes up with any there we go whoa close that down and it comes up with good guard quite often there we are simple word and I can go straight to it the reception signal the security guard to come over and that is probably even the length of time it's taken me to download this program and use it and search for one word guard that shows I've got one of 43 there's one highlighted out of 43 possible words which meet that criteria you can search for strings of words um, uh, guard of honor we'll say Oh, that's an indexed file. There we go. Um, it will bring up all the mentions of the word guard. It will also bring up all the ofs in the book, which are the 275 of them. And it will also highlight the word honour as well as guard. I don't think I've actually used the word. Oh, there's some there. There's the guards all being mentioned. Of and guard. Used quite a lot throughout the whole of this story. But it's found them, and it's found them very quickly. 275 of them. Okay, it's not particularly a big big word that's in there. Um, we can type in hospital. I'll just point out then that if you find a match for the words you're looking for, we found hospital, and it's in John Davis. Um, uh, book Ke uh, Kevin and the Ghost of John Davis. Right, if I double click on it, it will actually open the document. 
um, it won't highlight anything but the document's open so if you want to do a bit of editing of your words or whatever you could actually use that to open up the document to edit with again we'll take it out of Kevin and the Ghost we'll highlight 84 weeks and search and there it is it'll find hospital again I've got this habit of double clicking on the top bar here and it's not necessary just click it once um, hospital and there are lots of mentions of that in the book there we go that's a simple overview of the program called doc fetcher it's fun to use um, saves you a lot of time in the long run if you decide that you've missed letter or a phrase or a word or a phrase that you can't remember exactly which document it's in but you know it's on your computer somewhere use that program to save yourself trawling through loads and loads and loads of files Anyway, thank you very much for listening to this demonstration. I hope you've enjoyed it. And please remember to subscribe to my channel, which is Howard L. Hall on YouTube. Um, if you like this uh, demonstration, then please tick the thumbs up. And if you don't like it, then click the thumbs up button, button anyway um, and make somebody very happy. Thanks for listening.